pretty windy. A lot of wind, uh, some high clouds, but we'll see how it goes. Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you how I photographed a deep space nebula. This one's called the Fighting Dragons of Aira, about six and a half thousand light years away. Uh, in the constellation Aira of the southern skies of New Zealand. I'm lucky, I'm in Bortle 1 skies. Um, it's amazing skies here, super dark. Um, so this process might be easier for me than some in light polluted areas, but if you are shooting narrow band, uh, that cuts out a lot of light pollution anyway. Uh, I'm gonna take you through the process, introduce you to my gear a bit more, and we'll also take a look at the result um, and examine the nebula itself. Uh, so let's have a look. So for those new to astrophotography, the key is balance and alignment of your mount. So you can see here that I'm getting the balance right so that when I release the clutches, the telescope doesn't uh, is not weighted either side. It's nice and balanced. This will help with tracking. This telescope is a tracking mount or the telescope is on a tracking mount. Um, and this mount is going to follow the Earth's rotation and keep my target nice and centered, which will allow me to do long exposure photographs. Um, the mount itself is polar aligned. Your polar alignment is really key. Um, it is the alignment of the mount with the axis of rotation of the Earth. So in other words, you're aligning your mount to the celestial pole, either north or south. Um, now there's software on the ASI Air, which is the software that I use, uh, which can help to uh, make precise polar alignments. So the gear that I'm using here, we can see we have uh, the primary telescope with the camera, the ASI 533 mono on the back, and the filter wheel here as well. Um, you can also see a secondary telescope on top. This is my um, auto guider. So um, what it is, is a second camera with a secondary telescope attached, which will track and monitor the position of stars in order to precisely track. Okay guys, so it's wind has died down, it's clearing, and so actually it could be a reasonably good night. Everything's set up, um, ready to go. So next step now everything's powered is to connect my phone to the ASI Air which you can see here has a Wi-Fi so the ASI Air here is basically a little mini computer where my cameras my mount um, dew heaters everything's plugged into and then it has a piece of software oh there's a spider in my mount it has a piece of software um, that controls everything basically so first thing you need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi and immediately you can see I don't know how well you can see it with my terrible video uh, videography you can see my mount here my focal length of my telescope and my, my auto guiding telescope and also you can see the two cameras, my primary imaging camera and my auto guiding camera. Also my longitude and latitude and the date. So enter on it in. And we are connected. So at the top along here we've got all the different things. Camera, secondary camera mount, filter wheel, autofocuser. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus. Um, so the way I do that, this might be different with other people. Firstly, we click here where it says preview and we click focus. Now we're in the focus menu 
um, I can take short exposures. Now I'm on filter one here, which is my um, luminance filter, which is the brightest filter. So we do a one second exposure. And we should see stars. So there we go, we can see the stars. Um, they look reasonably well focused already, but a little bit out, a little bit bloated. Now I could manually mess around with the focus here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press autofocus. Now hopefully this autofocus will run efficiently. So two second exposure and I set it going. Okay, so you can see the software is now calculating. So it's, it's shifting the focus using the autofocuser and taking shots and then plotting them on this graph. Um, and this is essentially measuring the diameter of the star. That's my understanding. You can see it says star size at the top left. And it will try to find the smallest size. And sometimes fails, sometimes takes a little while, but it's pretty good. And you know, you can set this going and sit in your house and make your dinner, do whatever. Okay guys, so here you can see the auto guiding in action. It's struggling because it's quite cloudy, so I can't see the stars very well. Um, but you can see at the top there is a guide star, or the top right hand side it's got the guide star. Um, and it's sending corrections to the mount to make sure that guide star stays where it is. This will allow us to do much longer exposures. My exposure time tonight is going to be 5 minutes per photograph. And I'll take as many five minute photographs as I can. The Fighting Dragons of Era, four thousand light years away. This majestic nebula is something I always wanted to photograph and after just about eight hours of exposure here I'm blown away by the detail and the beauty. You can see a lot of structure in the gas and the dust again. The blue is the oxygen and the um, gold in colour is hydrogen and sulphur. Isolating these frequencies has pulled out a lot of detail. It does, however, make the stars a little bit more unnatural. And this is something I can work on to improve my astrophotography. Here we have towering clouds of hydrogen gas. This is the stuff of stars. The stars are forming from this gas as it collapses under gravity. Another star formation region which is forming thousands of stars. We can see here um, a group of stars forming cocooned within this gas, blowing out the gas. Um, one star here is still inside, illuminating all the surrounding region. Remember, every star is an entire solar system. The scales of these clouds is utterly vast. Here we have the primary star cluster within this nebula. All these stars are formed close to one another, produced a large cluster of very hot blue stars. These are much larger than our sun, much more powerful than our sun, and they blast open the nebula. They are so bright, they can even be seen with the naked eye. The fighting dragons that we see are the remnants of the structure, the surviving gas that has yet to be eroded. Isn't it amazing what you can do from your backyard with a small telescope and a camera? 
uh, this is just the beginning um, for me follow me for more and I'll keep going